And then we found it. The impossible geometry of Christite. Bright crystals buried in the asteroid fragments. Christite saved us. Allowed us to rebuild. The power it contained raised cities, gave us new weapons, battle frames, and even built starships. We wanted more. We found it on Alpha Prime, seven light years away. And we built the arc light to take us there faster than any ship, bending space in the blink of an eye. It failed. Admiral Nostromo saved Rio, but lost his family when the arc light smashed into Fortaleza. But the arc light brought more than tragedy. So much more. It brought the melding. Punching in from another dimension as the arc light engines flared, it consumed everything it touched. It smothered the earth, engulfing it. We were blinded, separated from each other, lost. And then the Chosen came. We are all that's left. The still running wreckage of the Arclight's engines keeps the melding at bay, but just. The Chosen came with weapons, ships, and strange machinery. They took over what was left of the Earth. I've seen so many possibilities. I dream of them. Of how we fought the war against the Chosen and the melding. I dream of my father and what he became. These are my nightmares. You can prevent this. Stop the nightmares. And bring an end to this war. Hello, I am Fighting Drag. Um... Welcome to, I guess, my Firefall introduction video. Um, long story short, I have a newer video recording system that I just got my hands on. And uh, this is my little experimentation, first recording with it. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try my hand at starting a Firefall introduction video. And then however that goes is uh, how it's going to end up. And uh, for your beautiful viewing YouTube pleasure, I hope you enjoy. Uh, f so, I guess the introduction begins now. Uh, Firefall is a mass multiplayer online role-playing game first-person shooter. So it's basically a large immersive map, which is what all role-playing games is, but this is a first-person shooter instead of you having your class base with spells and other abilities. But what I really liked about Firefall, and one of the reasons why this is easily going to be one of my more enjoyable games over the next few months I'm going to be playing, and possibly swarming on some of my YouTube video, is that you have one character with access to all your classes. So, well, since I'm loaded up, I'm going to go ahead and show you. Um, no, I'll save the boost for later. So, there's a third person, first person, an actual first person, first person, and then you can change your settings to have your weapon displayed with first person, first person, or not. And my flashlight's on. And my flashlight's off. Flashlight's on again. Oh, my flashlight's off again. Alright, so as I was trying to explain a little bit, you have one... Oop, that's not the button I want to use. It. Sorry, that was a little early. Hold on, I'm going to go back here. Third person. You have one character. And any class that you want. These are battle frames. And a battle frame is a mechanized uh, exoskeleton which is um, especially designed for whatever you're trying to do. And that was the wrong button, but neither nonetheless. This is the uh, heavy. This is basically your tank, as well as some of your other control movements. And the fun thing is, your right click is a shield, and your left click is your shooter. And my secondary... Oh, I have a grenade launch on this one. It's been a while since I last played my heavy. Um, so, I am still in the beginning of the game. This is, uh, hang on, let me show you. Nope, that's not the button. There we go. So basically, I'm here at Northern Shores, and this is level 69 zone. You start here, in Copacabana. Uh, basically, you have the cutscene that I, you just saw, and then it flips around into a simulator. That goes through your first match, explains to you the basic controls, the system, how everything works, and then you come out here in Coca Banana, 
Copacabana, do a handful of missions, and then you end up here in Northern Shores. And then you move on to Thump Dump, move down to Grotto Plains, on to Neuritic Processing, down to the Broken Shores and the Trans Hub Command, down to the Shanty Town, and across over here to Stonewall and Sunken Harbor. Or at least that's how I think it's supposed to be. I've honestly turned to level 16 with one of my suits. Oh, you're right. That's the other fun thing. This is the Earth now. See, we have South America here, North America here, and it breaks in here into the melding. And I guess Devil's Tusk is one of the only things that is still visible on the melding. Ooh, look at that. I can't even, I can't even access it because of how low of a level I am. And nope. Can't even get in there. Okay, continuing on my explanation then. This is still in the beginning of the game, sans the introduction tutorial and a few levels. So, you have your heavy machine gun, you have your fast DPS, right click is a shotgun, first click is a massive plasma cannon, the secondary weapon is an SMG I have equipped. Let's continue on to your biotech, and this is your healing class. I only have him leveled a little bit, so this is the main healing ability, or one of them. Anybody who gets hit by that is healed. And then we have a uh, little bit of a dark kind of thing. Um, so each class has a primary and secondary weapon. All the secondaries are linked, so you can have a secondary weapon, and you can pull off of one class and put it onto another class. And then... Each class has its main structure and this evolved structures for secondary tiers. So basically, once you level one of these beginning frames up to level 40, you get a token that you can put into getting a higher frame. This one I ended up sinking a few dollars to be able to buy early, because this is a uh, free-to-play game. However, it's pay for goodies and upgrades, as most free-to-play games are. So I got myself, instead of having a normal engineer, I got myself a bastion. And I'll show you the perks of that, and I'll be into also introducing parts of the games using the Bastion. So, uh, what I was trying to explain also is, with each class, they have a specialty weapon. And the specialty weapon has two capabilities with the left click and the right click. Contrary to other uh, FPS's, um, right click is not always your scope. Even though it still is for certain guns. So, darts and I'm not even sure what to classify that, because I haven't really played those this class very often. So, again, your first access is your heavy tank, your very swift DPS, your healer, your engineer. <laughs> I have all of the abilities unequipped because of how the engineer works. The engineer has deployables, which are turrets, and with the main weapon it's a lightning bolt, a Tesla rifle that you shoot with, or the right click is to be able to repair capabilities. I'll demonstrate more of that in a minute here after I jump. Ooh, that is the wrong button. I am sorry. Jumping ahead of myself a little bit, it seems. And here's the recon. The recon is the fast-moving, very light armor, uh, scope DPS, and then the recon can level up to becoming a sniper rifle or a energy rifle um, class. Let's see if I can get this to zoom in more. No, I can't. So I'm going to pick you off from a distance. Oh, you moved. Going for a hunt. Alright, so, those are your main basic, uh, basic classes, and the other fun one is that a recon can do a little doppelganger and go stealth, and then you can run around, ooh, it explodes, I didn't know it exploded, I guess I leveled up that one. So what I've been using is the Bastion. Bastion is the, leveled, uh, the evolved series of the um, engineer. In the Bastion, uh -huh. 
And that, all by itself, is a area of suppression. And this sentinel pod here heals everything else that's applied. Also, I can use my right-click little energy bolt to be able to repair. So uh, I guess that's a basic little overview of the first classes. So uh, with each class, you go into the Battle from Garage, you can customize your secondary weapons. All of these, again, can be transferred between any class, and the primary weapon is dependent on what class you're using. For example, this is a Dreadnought type, which is a heavy. This is one for the Recon, which is a swift. And where's another one? Yeah, I basically have Engineer and Recon stuff and Dreadnought stuff right now. And all your little abilities for the capabilities. And then your cores for your battle frame, which is the upgrades. So for example, this is um, an energy recharge battle frame. This is a health regeneration. And uh, then you can come here to your ability modules. And these are like, for example, extra magazine capacity, charge up time usage. But, uh, and then consumable items. And I'll get into this little doodad right here. I love the glider pads, but this is your health pack. Your mobile battle frame station, which is what I was just using to change my battle frame. And then, like, some grenades, some random stuff that I've picked up, and things for being able to mine as well as reforce I get. And you have your crafting components and salvage. So, basically, um, the other interesting part about this game is its crafting and creation system. Instead of buying and selling items, like in most MMOs, when you get a hold of some items that you don't need, you end up going to a merchant to be able to sell them. Instead, you open up your salvage panel here, destroyed. and you find an item that you'd like to salvage, drop it in, approve, and you end up having these extra research points. And this is part of monetary value, and these are resource items to be able to build things. So after you have those, bring them on over here. Process. That's some refining that I just had done a little while ago before I logged on last time. You can research new upgrades for your battle frame, your ability usage, your weapon production. Uh, for example, I have secondary weapons research. I'll come back to that in a moment. Your general knowledge here is for being able to get a hold of your health and stim packs, and also your thumpers, and your thumpers are part of mining. That's going to be the other fun little piece that's going to be part of this little video that I'm creating for you. So, again, I have weapon production, and I have secondary weapons researched, and a handful of other things researched. So, we go back. Oh, that was there. Not exactly. So, you come here, refining, because you have different resources to be able to have refined. I'm going to actually do this while it's still going. And that has 20 seconds going on it. Come over here to manufacturing. And let's go with battle frame equipment, shared equipment, and secondary weapons. And let's go with a grenade launcher. And... You know what, since I do love... I use grenade launchers a lot, and let's see, I'm not level 17, but I'm a level 16, so I'm going to go ahead and build this. Just so that now I have a brand new grenade launcher right when I level up my next level for the class I'm currently in. And then you have your consumables, which is your ammunition packages, your flares, your glider pad for your flight, stim packs, health packs, battle frame stations, your thumpers. I'm going to actually show you what this is here in a moment. Let's go ahead and build a stock squad because I don't have a stock squad currently in inventory. Yeah, and research points. Very nice. Okay. So while that is still manufacturing, I'm going to come on out here for a moment. So uh, with your controls, you have the normal WASD. That's forward, back, strafe, strafe. Your mouse is your move around for your controls. However, you have melee. And then you have your 1, 2, 3, 4. If you can see on the bottom here, those are your different abilities. 5, 6, 7, 8 are different assignable items using your pack. If you click on C, you have this little menu pop up. This is controlled by your scroll wheel. Oh, look at that. It did not go... There we go. 
And then if you, you have your cash shop for being able to get your bought items for real cash, your call downs, which is your support and supplies, your marketplace for being able to trade goods with other players, your notifications for other needs, your atlas records for your achievements, your social for your friends and your guilds and your army, and your PvP, and your world map. So jumping into call downs, I'm going to resource gathering, and I have, oh, I have a stock personal thumper. Okay, this is a scan hammer. This is how we resource mine. So there's 30.36% on my resource. So I'm going to go ahead and open this back up. Pull out a thumper. And you're going to see some gameplay action, and that's probably going to be the end of our video. Actually, that's larger than I think it should be. So I'm going to go and grab the other stock turret thumper over here that I just had made. Because if you go to the second tier thumper, you end up getting some of the... Um, What's the, what are they called? The uh, Covenant? No, this the that's Halo. The uh, you know, I'm slipping on game vocabulary. That's okay right now. You end up getting the humanoid and some of the larger opponents. So whatever level thumper you drop is what level NPCs and things are going to come to attack you. So I'm going to drop my other deployables. Actually, I probably shouldn't drop them. I should put more in it. Defendable area. So I'm going to drop my little suppression field location here that I have because of the class that I'm playing. And a little doodad that heals all of them. And we're going to begin some gameplay. And I hope you enjoy. I'm going to turn off my mic. And uh, this is Firefall. Right, so another key mechanic. You see the, the interaction button for being able to interact with NPCs and a handful of other things is the E button. So one of the interesting things with this is that you can be mining. If you get too heavy of NPC influence and you're going to be dying soon, you can run up to this and hit E and it'll call back the thumper. And you'll get all the resources that you've mined already and your thumper won't be destroyed. It's always a good thing. I think I might have deployed the easiest thumper possible.
Suspect hybrid identified. Extraction is complete. We send her on help. It's a wrap. 100% profit. And off goes the thumper. So I lied a little bit. That actually isn't the last of what I want to be able to show you. There's one last thing that I want to show you, and easily one of my favorite aspects of this game. Um, so you can get your hands on vehicles, but that I'm aware that's not until later on in the game. So you get consumables, and one of them is a deployable glider. It's easily one of my favorite ways to travel. Well, since playing this game, it's easily my favorite way to travel. And I'm being attacked. Where am I being attacked from? You're gonna die, and you have died. Very good. Very, very good. Alright, where should we head to? Let's see if I have... I do have a jump pad. Let's use that. And then use a flight pad after I've jumped a jump pad. Because I want to get a nice little high area to be able to show you how this thing works. Do 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 do. Going for a walk, and for some reason, the terrain's not agreeing with my boosters. Move over to here. Let's go to number five, and let's get right here. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's how I've been traveling throughout this map, is I've been basically using jump pads and flight glider pads. Don't fall off. Oh, thank you. To be able to get around the game and the map. And I am a huge flight aficionado, and so you will understand exactly why I love this. Oh, and it's not even letting me place it anywhere around here. Since we're here, let's go ahead and try to go to distance. No, it's not. I want to send a normal waypoint. All right. Ready? Here we go. Item tracking activated. I can already tell I'm probably not going to make it all the way to the building. Let's see if I do. Go, little wings that don't actually wings, go! You can't flap, but at least you can get distance. Almost there. Almost there. No, don't touch the water. Don't touch the water. Don't touch the water. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, oh I don't want to sand. Alright. Well, the combination of everything. I got pretty far. Alright. And I think that's a pretty nice, good introduction to Firefall video. Um, I am still trying to figure out how I'm going to be organizing my YouTube, as well as figuring out my Twitch. But um, I'm going to probably end up having this as my introduction video to Firefall if it all recorded properly. And then down the bottom links with the video introduction and everything is going to have the up links to more gameplay footage as well as other goodies when Firefall. And also, uh, this is going to be in a playlist channel of my YouTube channel, and you should be able to peruse around that to be able to find more videos, if I have more videos. If you're looking at this tomorrow, well, obviously, this is the only video you're going to be able to see. And, uh, it is September 3rd of 2014, and this is the beginning of the Firefall recordings. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned a little bit about the game, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your afternoon, and please subscribe! 
Um, I'm jumping up with more of my own social media footprint as well as getting a handful of other things done in my life. So I would love to have a subscription. I'd love to see you check back. You have a fantastic day and a uh, fantastic afternoon, evening, morning, whatever it is that you're checking out this YouTube video. Farewell.